Good evening, everyone. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Thank you so much for joining me on this lovely Tuesday evening. All right. If you are new to this channel, we like to sit around, listen to Dave Ramsey, debt telephone call, see what we can learn from them. And it doesn't matter how new or old the call is. And of course, if you're a returning viewer, you are family. So please make yourself comfortable. You know the routine. Kick up your feet. Let's see what we can learn from a very recent call that just came in yesterday. It's called You Can't Keep This Secret Anymore. This just ran on Monday. So we're going to go ahead, check it out. Let's take the screen all the way down. Oh, people, spring break is days and just a few days away for those of us here in Tampa. But until then, let's stay on task. You can't keep this secret anymore. It ran on Monday, just yesterday. And let's figure out what we can learn from it. Let's do it. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Becky is in Bristol, Virginia to kick us Hello, off. Hello, Becky, Becky. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Uh, thank you uh, for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, well, I am currently $85,000 in debt that my husband of 35 years does not know about. Oh, people. Woo. The tea. It is starting hot, ladies and gentlemen. The tea is, you know, we, we didn't even get to simmer. We just went straight to boil and pot overflow. Oh, yes, the, 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 this is the new hot tea mirror. $7.99 on Amazon, family, $7.99. Cheap backing, but oh, well. Oh, my goodness. Okay, $85,000 of debt her husband does not know about. Wow. Okay, well, we're going to hear more before we say any more. Let, let's just hear it. Ooh. And I have... I just had my oh crap moment when I overdrew my checking account because um, over 20 years ago we had to file bankruptcy and at that point my husband and I separated our checking account because he is a saver and I am a spender and I got us into that mess. He is a saver and she's a spender. I, I could go on so many different forks right now. But I'm going to try hard not to. But people, you've heard me say it on this channel. What have I said on bedtime chit chat story time, family? What have I said when one is a saver and one is a spender? If the extremes are too, if the division between them is too extreme, where a compromise cannot be met, the relationship is not going to work. If it's just a little extreme, I think I did this a few weeks ago. I said, okay, let's say you like to spend $500 a month on clothes and I'd rather have you spend $250. Can maybe we could compromise, say $300, you still get your clothes, but can we compromise? We compromise there. But if you like to spend $1,000 on clothes and I know our budget is $250 and we can't find a compromise that's not going to sink us and still allow us to save for retirement and all of that. We're sunk. And she says she just had her oh crap moment at 85,000. And let me bet, let me bet if, if, if I'm going to uh, take a guess here. She only has this oh crap moment because she realizes she can't keep up on the bill anymore. It's like a hamster in a wheel and that wheel's going round and round. At first it starts off slow and she can hide everything. I am willing to bet. From a former spendaholic, thank God I was not in a relationship during those years. I mean, I had a boyfriend, but it wasn't anything serious and nothing that tied himself down or myself down. So my spending addiction harmed no one per se. But she said she just had an old crap moment, 85000 I'd have had my old crap moment and I'd be like, Oh my God, I'm $10,000 in debt. My spouse doesn't even know. This is where marrying the wrong person really Fs you up. They can really take you down financially. This is how it's done. So now I am door dashing. I'm working my full-time job. I'm selling everything that I have purchased, trying to get out of this debt. Because I and you're trying to get out of it without your husband knowing it. Door dash is not going to get you out of 85K of debt. I do not want to tell him and I don't want to ask him to help me. 
pack, and I can't find, and DoorDash where I live is not that popular because it's just a rural area. It wouldn't even be popular if you were in Tampa. 85 grand on DoorDash, trust me, if we could make 85 grand on DoorDash, I would be doing it. So, how much do you make? I, get my, I make 38,000 a year. You're screwed. Look, sometimes you just got to say, I'm screwed. I effed this one up really badly. Let me ask you something, family. Would you divorce if your spouse came to you and said, I have hidden from you $85,000? Sounds like this is in credit card debt, from what I gather, in consumer debt. And I didn't tell you, and I chose not to tell you because I wanted to keep spending. She has a spending addiction. She has a spending addiction that her husband cannot fix, and clearly that's proven. And because this was this debt was occurred during the marriage, chances are a court would hold them both responsible, even in a divorce. Oh, geez. You know, take it from a spending addict, a former spending addict in my 20s. I'm now in my 50s, so it's long gone, long under control, decades under control. But take it from a spending addict. This is not a situation you want to put any innocent person who is financially responsible. This is not a situation you want to put them in. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I hate to use the word divorce so much on this channel, but the only reason I use it, folks, is because I've been there. It sucks. It really, really sucks. Yeah. You're 85 grand in the hole and you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me when you were 5,000 down. You didn't tell me when you were 10, 15,000 down. And, you know, maybe we could have worked together as a couple to identify what the problem was. You waited till you're damn near 100 grand in the hole. Come on, let's just make it 85. Let's just make it a cool 100. It's, it's, a, it's a pebble's throw to 100 grand. That's when you tell me. The other question becomes this, and I'm not blaming her husband. We don't blame the victim, but did she buy a whole bunch of stuff and it kept coming in the house and she only makes around 38000 a year gross? Did her husband not say, how are you constantly affording all this stuff? How do you afford all this stuff? The other question is this, does the husband have eighty five grand to bail them out? And if he has eighty five grand to bail them out, He's probably going to have to, and then he's going to have to decide if he wants to stay in this marriage. And the reason I say no to staying in this marriage, and remember, this call just ran yesterday. Now, there is a chance, um, you know, that he could choose to stay with her. But I, I have to be honest, my experience, no, because he, she has shown this addiction is out of control. This is no different, folks, than staying with a shop, than staying with a gambleaholic, an alcoholic, a drug addict. That she needs her fix. She is going to take them straight down into retirement poverty, where they will not have the ability to retire. Now, good on her. She acknowledges they filed bankruptcy. I think she said she was the cause of it. Yada yada. Okay, but what have I said to you, family? Addictions are not solved by a date on a calendar. Addictions are only solved when you can get the mind to change. And like I said, it can take years, decades to get the mind to change. Wow. Becky, what's the 85000 What kind of debt is it? Credit card. It's all credit cards. Yeah. Yeah. She has, she has a shopping. She's a shopping addict. I know. Yeah. So she, she, she's a shopping addict. She shops for stress relief. She, stop, she shops for emotional relief. She shops like people overeat, like people gamble, like people drink, like people do drugs. It's her escape. Now, I'm not blaming her husband on this, but I am going to say it also says something about the state of the marriage, too. But here's the thing. When I was a shopping addict, even if I had been married, it would have had nothing to do with my husband. It would have had nothing to do because... He wasn't a good enough husband or he's not a good man. No, it, 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 it's literally me. That's like saying I'm causing someone to drink too much. Okay. No, it, it's, it's me. I am the problem. I have a shopping addiction and my shopping addiction until it is fixed. I can't have a relationship with someone that's effective. 
until I fix my shopping addiction. Unfortunately, her husband's now going to realize that. You may love your wife, but she has a serious shopping addiction. And an addict is going to find a way around every safeguard you can put in. Don't sit there and tell a shopping addict, cut up the credit cards, go to FPU. No, not going to fix it. Yes, they can do those things to start to band-aid the problem, but the real issue has to come from them in their head. I, I feel horrible for her husband. This is how the person you're married to can really sink you financially. Big time. And you don't even know it. Yeah, I would divorce. Yeah, I, I would. Wow. And Ooh. what are you what are you buying? Like what what what's what's all stuff if she even remembers it on the bills. I was buying anything and everything I wanted. If my kids wanted something which they're now grown, I would buy them something. I would if my mom needed help, I'd just give her a credit card. Wow. So you just gave your mom a card too. Yeah, I would divorce you. Yeah. When, when you're with someone who has an addiction that jeopardizes your financial well-being, it jeopardizes the roof over your head, it jeopardizes your transportation, which jeopardizes your ability to get to work, it jeopardizes your future ability to retire. I'm not talking the little stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not even talking five grand. Oh, honey, I spent five grand at Macy's and I shouldn't have. Okay, we, we, we can work with that as long as it don't ever happen again. We can work with that. Okay, I'm talking when you've already been bankrupt once because of a shopping addiction. And I believe she said that, family, that this had already happened. 15 years ago, and that sounds like a long time till you realize you can file bankruptcy every 10 years. So we're barely out of the 10-year mark to file bankruptcy, and she does it. she's going to have to do it again, most likely, um, unless her husband bails her out. When the actions of someone puts your financial security at risk, that's not someone you want to be married to. It's not. Mm. Okay. What made you wake spending. up today and go, do you, yeah. I'm done with this? Yeah, did you hear what she said? She said uncontrollable spending. Yeah. And then to give the freaking card to your mother? You know, if I, if, if I were, if I were to, to divorce her, I would ask the judge not to make me responsible for it, especially the card that she gave to her mother. If it's all done without, without her knowledge. Wow. So, so her mother had a good time on it too. Uh, when I overdrew my checking account, paying these minimum payments on these credit cards. You see, the minimum payment. This is the minimum payment, which we don't know what that is yet, but she can't keep up on that. And this is the way debt works, family. This is how debt works. You can run up all these cards and it's fine for a while because the minimum payments are controllable. A $5,000 card has a $50 minimum payment, Right. I'm just throwing out a number and, and you just keep running up all these debts, debts, debts. You keep running them up and pretty soon you can't even make the minimum payments. And that's when you know you're really in trouble. But the problem is you were in trouble long before it got there. You can't pay the total balance. It's not the minimum payment that matters. It's the total balance. And are you paying any other bills right now? How are your finances going with your husband if everything's separate? See, see, so the husband knew, and I guarantee you the husband's going to blame himself too. The husband's going to husband's gonna go, I shouldn't have stayed with this woman. And guess what? The husband would be right. Um, our house is paid for, thanks, thankfully, for, cause of, because of him. And yeah, now they're going to have to probably take out a loan against the house to pay off her debt. Potentially. And um, I pay my own car payment and cell phone bill. What's your car worth and what do you owe on it? Uh, I owe 15000 on it, and it's worth about ten. And was that one of the things you were planning on selling? Uh, I don't see how I could because I don't have the $5,000 to make up the difference. Is the fifteen wrapped up in that eighty five you mentioned, or is that outside of no. that? No, no, no. My husband knows about the car payment. So you got a hundred grand in debt? Yeah. Anything? Yeah, hundred, hundred grand. Yeah, with the car. Anything else? No. Okay. Okay, so... She needs to tell her husband and she's going to have to accept the consequences of the, of her actions. 
even with the selling, even if they take care of this debt, her problem is not solved. And her problem is she has a spending addiction. She has an out of control spending addiction that she has not ever, ever come to grips with. So they can pay this off again. Right. Um, but in some ways her husband staying is just fueling her addiction. He's a financial safety net. She needs to hit rock bottom. This is not going to get her to hit rock bottom. If her husband comes in and pays off the bill, they have kids, but you know, I think she said the kids were grown. If I'm, if I'm correct or something like that or near grown. So Becky, you do realize you're going to have to tell him. I don't want to, but well, well, and well, hold on. You, you think yeah, you're going to go to the grave and he doesn't know this ever happened. Well, and here's the thing. If they ever go for a refi, if they ever go to purchase a car, if there's ever any sort of reason why credit has to be pulled up, could you imagine the look on his face when there's a denial and he's like, wait a minute, all you have to do is pay for a $15,000 car and a friggin' cell phone bill. What's the problem? This woman is spending so far beyond her means. This is is spending addiction. This is what spending addiction looks like, family, when you have a spouse who cannot control their spending. They take themselves down, and as that world pit, world uh, pool gets bigger and bigger, the more debt they get into, they take you down, and they suck everybody down. The fact that she gave her mother a credit card, wow, that, that part just boggles my mind. It's like, are you trying to buy love? Do you, do you feel, you know, you're, you're, you're not accepted. So you're trying to buy love somewhere. I've never given anyone a credit card. Never had anyone give me a credit card, but this is what being married to a financial shopping addict looks like. This is perfect example. And then you as the innocent spouse, what you have to decide is, do you want this type of relationship? Is this the relationship you want? And then you, as the innocent spouse, totally aware, totally informed, this is the relationship, and you choose to stay. Don't be surprised when you can't retire. Don't be surprised in another 10 years when this comes up again. She has not solved this problem. And from what I can tell, she's nowhere close to solving it because of the fact that she's calling in to try to hide it. At least that's the impression I'm getting. She's not calling in so she can come clean to her husband. He is going to find out about it. It is impossible for him not to find out about this. Well, I would I would do just about anything to stop it because, like I said, we I got us in a really bad situation 20 years ago, and he's not this type of person. He's not a spender. He's a saver. He paid our house off early. I just and can't imagine. And people can sit and they can say, oh, man, she's just not appreciative, which is true. She's not appreciative of it. But just like any addict, their addiction will supersede any appreciation they have for someone else's efforts until she decides that she doesn't want to be an addict anymore until she decides that, you know, she's got too much to lose. OK, and until this this going on up here changes. No, he's just going to be supporting an addict. And that's why I say it's time for him to uh, get out. Imagine Horrible. having a healthy marriage going forward while you keep this secret. You can't. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're not, your marriage will not be where it could be ever. With the marriage is probably dead, to be totally honest. And that's why she doesn't want to tell him. The marriage is probably dead. Secrets, right? And that's financial or otherwise. Um, because there's a part of you, Becky, when you hold those kind of secrets and you're trying to be the one to fix it all on your own, which I'm not saying you shouldn't. I mean, like we can get to that discussion in a little bit, but, um, that that's going to come out other ways, like within your body. I mean, like you, you can't people, humans, our souls, we can't carry that around. It will, it will come out sideways one way or the other or it's going to wind up on some 60 second TikTok because trust me half of those TikToks are people who've tried to hold a secret and they just can't hold it anymore right <laughs> and so coming clean for you becky and not even just for him to have the knowledge for you it will eat w one of the things yes it will eat her alive one of the things that i would do if i were her take it from a former shopping addict 
before she tells her husband, this is something I would do. Because, yeah, she's going to have to accept he may choose to divorce her. That, that, and, you know, all the begging, pleading, and crying ain't going to solve that. Okay. Been there, done that. All right. Never again. Um, but one of the things that I would do if I were her is I would be setting up counseling appointments where I'm going to be dealing with my shopping addiction. In other words, I go to my husband, one, I come clean, but two, I immediately right then and there, tell him what I have started doing. I'm not saying this won't change his mind in divorcing her. Knowing what I know now about, you know, what it's like to live in debt and all of that stuff. I don't know if it would change my mind. It probably wouldn't, but, but it's better than just going, Hey, I've run up $85,000 in credit card debt. I chose not to tell you about. And only when I couldn't meet the minimum payment, it's going to be like, you can't even meet the minimum payment. What the heck is the minimum payment? You immediately say, I'm aware I screwed this up. Here's what I'm doing right now. I am in counseling. This is my doctor. This is what we are going to do. This is what I'm going to counseling for. In other words, Show up with the problem clearly, but also what are you doing to solve it? And she needs to come clean about her mother, about his getting in a card to her mother too. You can't ask the mother to pay it back though. If you gave her the card and said, here, mom, have a good time with the card. You can't now turn around and tell mom she needs to pay it back. So going back, going to your mother and saying, pay it back. That's not an option in my book. Okay. It's just not an option. If she's going to do anything to try and solve this marriage, she's got to show her husband that, you know, what, what is she trying to do to solve her spending addiction? But like I said, that may not necessarily save the marriage. In my case, would it work at that point? Probably not. Just because, guys, I, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been on the debt side. I've been on the bankrupt side, debt, bankruptcy, bad financial relationships. And then I've been on this side, debt free debt free HOA dues at $450 a month paid until January, 2025, $2,500 savings account, $1,600 a month into retirement. Holy cow. Give me this side any day. Condo paid off this side. It's like $110,000 student loan forgiven in 2022. A leased card that I can afford that I could buy if I wanted to. I just don't want to. This side is so much better. It, it's, I, I never want to cross that line again. And I will share my side with someone that I love. I will share everything that I have. And yeah, it may not be a lot, but it sure as heck steady. I will share it. And what will one day be a 30 year teacher pension on top of it? 12 years to go. I will share everything I have with someone who has the same ideology that I have about money. That's what I will do. Her and her husband, they are on, she, she, she cannot be the wife that her husband needs her to be. And you got to remember this was, she said was 20 years ago. They did the bankruptcy. They are now 20 years older with kids that are raised. I think she said kids that are raised. Pardon me if I'm wrong on that. They're now 20 years older. They are that much closer now to retirement. What's he looking at? What type of retirement is he looking at? Wow. You alive. For you, you can't carry the secret around. It has to be taken from the darkness of inside of you to the light. And, and it is going to be an excruciating conversation. And she needs to be prepared that he may say, I'm going to bail us out for his own sake. And I'm done with this marriage. And I wouldn't blame him if he did. They are 20 years older. They're 20 years closer to retirement. He can't have someone pulling him down as he's trying to pull himself up at self up. And, you know, I would say minimum retirement plan minimum. I, like I said earlier, I I've, um, I started planning a retirement pension in my 30s. I'm an 18th year teacher, third generation, but that was planned in my 30s. So if he's the saver, he's looking long term. He's looking, okay, you know, where are we going to go? And then he's got this crap following him behind. Yeah, that doesn't work. She needs to accept the consequences. Um, mm -hmm. 
But I think for the, for any way for you to move forward, not just financially, but in other areas of your life, Becky, you have to bring him into this or and or someone else. If you have a good friend. Hell, e- hell, e- even if she wanted, if, if they were to divorce, okay, let's just say he doesn't know about this. If they were to divorce, credit reports would be pulled. Th- this is this is nearly impossible to hide. And now these days, now day and age, you can get all your credit reports pulled and they, everybody can see everything, right? They, they can see everything you've done. It is impossible to hide this for forever. And if she can't even make the minimum payment, <laughs> nah. And um, who knows you both well, maybe even going to a third party first and having them sit in with you if it's too difficult because of, you know, your history. But um Whatever that looks like, I mean, I really would encourage you, you you have to tell somebody and then eventually you have to tell him and have this conversation. And and Becky, and I want you to do some good work too. I'm like, you know, we'll get you some John Deloney, Dr. John Deloney material too, because there's some real stuff going on, Becky. Like I know like when you look at those numbers on your screen and you realize, holy crap, I can't even keep up the minimum payments with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. See, and a shopping addict doesn't worry about the total balance. Like I said earlier, all a shopping addict worries about is can I meet the minimum? And this is why the balance can get so high because as long as I can meet the minimum, it's like, hey, no problem. I could run up every credit card that I have, okay? I, I have access to almost six figures of credit card access. I have really good credit, stellar credit. Okay. 0% interest, yada, yada. I could run that up and I could make the minimum payments on all of it. If I, even if I ran it all up, I could, I could make the minimum, but the problem is it's not the minimum. It's what does it take to get out of the entire balance? If I were her, I'd probably tell them in a public restaurant somewhere with some quiet music. That's your old crap moment. But there's a lot of other stuff, Becky, going on that caused this, right? And it's, and I mean, I don't know if there's a level of a shopping addiction. I don't know if it's uh, really poor boundaries that you've set with people, a sense of not living in reality, right? Like there's all these elements. Yeah, that poor boundary, giving a credit card to your mother without telling your husband, hey, I gave a credit card to my mother-in-law. And by the way, I'm already running up credit as fast as I can here. Oh, your poor husband. Yeah. It's, um that Mm -hmm. I want you as a person to overcome because money's just the symptom. This $85,000 in credit card debt is a symptom of other things going on within you. Yes, and and thank you to the ever so lovely Rachel Cruz. Yeah, it's in her. This is not her husband's fault. This is not her husband's fault. When people have personal addictions, um, and and I'm glad to hear her, I've not heard anyone say it is her husband's fault. It's not. So if anyone's thinking it's her husband's fault, I don't care. It's not her husband's fault. When someone has an addiction, that's on them. That addiction is on them, 100%. And until that's fixed and until that's addressed, I mean, really with a good counselor and a therapist, are you going to heal from that, be aware of that, and be able to make different decisions day in and day out? And and I wish there was an easy button. I wish there was an easy button, but it's going to be a season for you guys, a season of financially paying this back, whatever that looks like and however you guys decide within your marriage. Um, but it's also going to be a season of rebuilding trust because trust will be broken. It's been broken. It, well, the problem is that the trust has been broken for the entire marriage. Remember, 20 years ago, they did this because she had done it before. So their entire marriage has been like this. So where do you start building trust? And now you're looking at retirement. This is the type of wife who will have her husband thinking they're all set to go for retirement. She goes, oh, honey, here's $100,000 of debt we need to take care of. The trust is gone. Um, mm-hmm. And hard conversations. There, I mean, it's it's going to be... It's going to be painful, but it is the way to healing, Becky. That And she needs to accept that he may choose to call the relationship done. He doesn't need this. That is the way to heal. It is not to hold this and try to fix it yourself. Okay. I'm so, I'm um, so sorry. I'm so sorry you're, you're in this. And I- I'm sorry you're in it, but it was by your doing. It was by your hand. I'm sorry you didn't take more work and effort to control your addiction. I'm also sorry, perhaps you didn't feel that you could go to him and say, Hey, I'm $5,000 in credit card debt. 
or 10,000 or 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Do, do you see how, see how long this has gone? See how long this has gone? Yeah. Nowhere from zero to 85 did she ever go to him. This to me is not recoverable because it would be the second incident. And if I added up all the years together, this has been around the entire time. So what do they say? And Sandy is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So what does she want her husband to do? The same thing, help pay off the debt, expect a different result. So now they're 10 years away from retirement and he finds out they're broke. If this husband wants to retire with any sort of financial security, if the husband is a saver, he needs a woman who is also a saver. He needs a woman that uh, respects that boundary. And she may respect it, but the problem is she has an addiction that is overriding it. I would not expect a man to be interested in me if I were out spending money behind his back. And I'm not talking on little stuff, you know. You know, okay, I went and bought a comforter for $75 and I'm just going to kind of sneak that in the house. Okay, I, I can deal with that. I can deal with that, Okay. Or he bought a new fishing pole that was a hundred bucks. Okay, whatever. Those things don't financially break us so long as our budget can afford that. But when you start talking in the thousands, okay, and you are spending this type of money, that's a problem. I know there's probably so much shame and guilt and mm -hmm. regret that you have. Um, but moving forward for you to to be able to take that weight off healing has to happen and it and part of that healing may be that she needs to be a divorced woman living on her own and till she figures this out and then maybe for the next husband she'll be in a better place can't happen on your own it really can't we have to have other people around us and i think good professionals yeah as well and long term um, we have to get your husband back to husband mode instead of roommate mode. And he may not want to be husband at mode anymore. He may say, I'm over it. And he would have that right. Oh, there's Alexa. One of the best parts of marriage and one of the hardest parts is having the accountability of a spouse. And I think that could have helped a lot of this if there was transparency in the finances and him saying, hey, you need to cut up that card. Remember, we don't use that anymore. We got burnt. We went through bankruptcy 20 years ago. We don't want that to happen again. Addictions are so incredibly selfish. It is the ultimate of selfish. And you're and you're, again, you're looking at someone who's been there. Addictions are the ultimate of selfish behavior in a relationship because that addiction is going to override any healthy thing that could have come from the relationship or that could be built in the relationship. Addictions are incredibly selfish. And so I think you need accountability right now. It may not be your husband because there's already a lack of trust there. But we need accountability from other people. You've been doing this alone and keeping this secret. And how old are you? I'm 50. You're Whoa. Oh, geez. I was hoping she'd be like, you know, 40, maybe even 45, 50. So they should be on a retirement track, shouldn't they, family? Should they not be on a retirement track? So husband can retire at 67, maybe even earlier. And what does he have? He, he, the husband is smart. He's looking, he's going, I'm with someone who's never going to allow me to retire. I need to get the hell out. If I were the husband and he has the money to pay off this debt, I'd pay off the debt. I would file for divorce and I would start over. I don't say that easily. And I know it seems like I probably say that a lot on this channel, but it's because some of these calls that come in, the writing is on the wall. You see the pattern. What is it? I just said it's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So is he going to do this again for a third time? This is going to be the second time he's paid it off and they've dealt with her. Is he willing to do it for a third time at 65, 70 years old? No. She needs to accept that uh, th this is most likely the end of the relationship. She's 50. That's a big deal. You're supposed to be well into retirement planning. I was well into adjusting my budget. Okay. Cause my ex left me at about when I was about 47. 
Okay, so by the time I was 50, I was well into let, let's get that a budget readjusted. Let's start, you know, figuring out how, how we're going to become a no debt or, you know, as little debt as possible household of one. She's 50 trying to figure out how to hide $85,000 from her spouse. This is how people retire broke. You're 50. So you have yeah. a lot of years left, Becky. I'm like, you have a whole second part of life. She had a whole 15 years and she effed that one up. She effed up the ones the years before that. So she got 15 years to do it all over again. Now when she calls in, it'll be I'm 65 years old and I'm broke. No. Is that a risk a husband wants to take on a wife? Is that a risk he wants to take on? Even if he makes good income, how many calls family have we seen, have we heard where the person makes, where one of the spouses makes a great income, but the problem is it's all being squandered away by one or both parties. It's not what you make. It's what you keep. So <laughs> how, how many of you out there in viewer land would be like, yeah, I'm 50 years old. I've got a wife who's done this or a husband who's done this all over again. I'm good for a third round. How about you? We've seen bigger, to be scarier lived. numbers. Yes, to be lived, and I we want that for you, and more, and and I want that for you more than just the money side. I want this fix for you. But Becky, I'm like, man. All right, folks, that is the end of this video. You know, I cut it off towards the end. Once I think we've got the gist, who wouldn't wish this for anyone? And I would not be in it. I would not be in this for anything in the world. And that's coming from firsthand experience. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. People, thank you for spending this Tuesday evening with me. I appreciate you very much. I hope you will consider subscribing. Have a great night. I will see you on Wednesday, at least. That's the plan. Bye, everyone. <laughs>